Good morning uh, to friends in the United States. Good afternoon to colleagues uh, in the United Arab Emirates and in uh, other parts of the Middle East. Uh, thank you so much to all of you for taking the time to attend this webinar with the leadership from three of the most important entities in Abu Dhabi, Mubadala, Adnoc, and ADQ. First, I wanna say I'm Danny Seabright, president of the US UAE Business Council. And I want to offer and extend my, my sincerest condolences uh, for the passing of UAE Finance Minister and Dubai Deputy Ruler, Sheikh Hamdan. Uh, we just learned this morning that Sheikh Hamdan has passed and I wanna extend again condolences to all friends and colleagues in the UAE. Earlier this year, uh, the three entities that I just mentioned, Mubadala, Adnoc, and ADQ joined together to form the visionary Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance. Today, our distinguished speakers will provide exclusive insights into the objectives of this alliance and avenues for partnership. We are so pleased to be holding this webinar under the auspices of the US UAE Business Council's recent, recently launched Climate Change Task Force. As the UAE government continues their strong focus on climate change mitigation, and as the newly elected Biden administration begins to realign the US with global climate change efforts, the Business Council is pleased to augment these efforts through the formation of this task force. We are pleased to have over 300 registered guests for today's webinar, comprising business executives, government officials, and industry leaders, energy industry leaders. We also have states and partners in the United States from Alabama, Utah, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, the American Gulf, Gulf States Institute in Washington, from our GMIS partnership, the US Embassy in Abu Dhabi, the UAE Embassy in Washington, DC, the, and the US Department of State. We also have press on the line of correspondence from the National and Reuters. I should note that this session is on the record. It is being live streamed and a video recording of this event will be posted on YouTube immediately following our presentation. We know many people will watch and catch up in the coming days in addition to all those that will watch this morning. I'm now pleased to introduce our three speakers who are here today, each of whom will make opening remarks followed by a question and answer session. The audience is welcome to submit questions through the Q&A or chat feature, and we will monitor that closely. Let me begin by introducing Badr Al Alama, Executive Director of UAE Clusters at Mubadala. Badr Alama is the Executive Director of Clusters Unit within Mubadala's UAE Investments Platform, which contributes to the acceleration of the UAE's economic diversification and transformation and investing in national world-class champions, fostering vibrant industrial and commercial clusters and partnering with world-class global entities. In addition to his role at Mubadala, Badr heads the organizing committee for the Global Manufacturing and Industrialization Summit, otherwise known affectionately as GMIS, which brings together high profile subject matter experts and thought leaders from around the world to discuss and debate the future of the manufacturing sector. I am pleased to count Botter as a longtime friend and partner and thank him for joining today. Botter, the floor is yours for your opening remarks. Thank you, Danny. I mean, let me start off by saying it is such a pleasure to see you and to be with my colleagues, Hamad and Khalid, obviously, after, you know, the sort of this pandemic has kept so much distance between all of us. And, and it's always such a great opportunity to be able to speak to people and talk about, you know, some of the more amazing stuff that we've been doing here in Abu Dhabi and more specifically through Mubadala. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I want to talk a little bit more about what we're doing with hydrogen, about our, our focus on energy transition, about our appetite for investing into the future. And as you rightly said, Danny, our focus today is to create national champions that eventually become global champions. So with that, I'll leave it to the sort of when we get into the session and you can you know, ask me some of the questions, but more than anything else, I'm really pleased to be here today. And I want to thank you personally for organizing this uh, seminar. Thank you, Bader. Uh, let me uh, introduce then Khaled al who's the uh, acting senior vice president of Adnox hydrogen business. 
leading this newly created business unit within ADNOC. Halid focus, Halid's focus is developing new hydrogen, act, hydrogen activities within the company to meet the emerging global demand for low carbon fuels. Halid has more than 15 years of experience in operations, asset development, and project portfolio management. He has held various roles within ADNOC and its subsidiaries, including Vice President Petrochemicals Business, Petrochemicals Operations Manager, as well as Process Engineering Manager in, Ad in ADNOC's Baruch Joint Venture. Halid, the floor is yours. Thank you, Danny, uh, for this uh, opportunity. I'm really pleased to be here with you today, joined together with my colleagues and friends from the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance to talk to you about hydrogen and the start of an exciting journey that we are about to embark on together. So uh, that is really exciting for us as we do see hydrogen as, as a real opportunity. And we do see this being linked to the climate challenge where the energy demand continues to grow, but at the same time, there is a real requirement to substantially reduce the emissions in line with the Paris Accord. So we do see this as a real challenge and we would like to be at the heart of the solution. And this is where we see the role of hydrogen given its unique capabilities uh, as an energy carrier uh, that is capable to decarbonize some of these hard to abate sectors. And we do see a key role for Abu Dhabi and the UAE to play here, given our leadership in energy innovation, as well as our proven track record in providing reliable energy supply to the globe for many decades. So I think for Ednok, the story has begun with the mandate from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed Bin Zayed uh, last November for Ednok to explore the opportunities in the hydrogen space. And I think this is really exciting and really fits within our DNA, being a responsible energy uh, producer, uh, as well as we are keen to also expand our portfolio uh, with regards to energy from just conventional oil and gas, which is what we do today, to uh, include more cleaner energy options that are fitting the customer requirements in line with the uh, changing energy mix. Uh, so we are very keen to position ourselves in the space. Uh, while we do believe that oil and gas will continue to play an important role, uh, that's for sure, but we also see uh, a growing uh, or a rapidly growing hydrogen market, which we are very keen to take uh, our positions in. And when we looked at uh, our systems uh, within Ednoc, we noted that we have been handling uh, hydrogen for many decades uh, within our systems, from production all the way to end use and in between. And uh, we do believe that we do have competitive advantages that makes Ednoc really unique in the space uh, that are coming from two folds. I think the first is with the abundance of natural gas availability that we can really produce at highly competitive cost. And the second is our unique CCUS potential, where we view carbon as a potential revenue stream uh, instead of a liability that we have to manage. So we do see this as uh, the right combination that really sets Ednoc aside from the competition and really help position Ednoc well within the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance, where our, uh, our strength or our combined strength fits really well uh, as we collaborate together and really position uh, Abu Dhabi and the UAE at the heart of the hydrogen business. So uh, with that being said, we do look forward for collaboration opportunities across the value chain of hydrogen. And we are always open for discussion with regards to hydrogen business. Khalid, thank you so much for those uh, opening remarks and scene setting remarks. Um, I'm gonna uh, introduce uh, Mr. Hamad Al Hamadi, who is the investment lead for ADQ's Energy, Utilities, and Industri Industries Cluster. He specializes in business development through engaging in deal sourcing, value creation, and turnarounds. Hamad actively manages vital portfolio companies within his respective cluster, namely Abu Dhabi National Energy Company, Taka, which has been in the news just in the last few days. Emirates Nuclear Energy Corporation, ENIC, Emirates Water and Electricity Company, EWEC, Abu Dhabi Sewage Services Company, ADSSC, and Emirates Steel and others. Hamid previously spent 14 years in Mubadal Investment Company, 
where he participated in the creation of high profile projects across three sectors, including utilities, industry, and, and financial services. He has all spent, also spent time at the Carlisle Group in Washington, DC, focusing on mergers and acquisition investments in, in the industrial sector. Hamid, over to you. Thank you, Danny, very much. A pleasure to connect with you again, and pleasure to connect with the members of the US UAE Business Council, and of course, with our partners in the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance. Um, I think it's maybe it's worth highlighting before going into the hydrogen, given uh, ADQ is two years old, to give a one minute overview about the company. So that ADQ would be outstanding. Was, um, Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, so ADQ was established by the government of Abu Dhabi in 2018 as an independently governed, uh, governed company. Uh, since then, select state-owned companies have been transferred to us. So between these companies and the acquisitions we have made, we currently own more than 90 operating companies, both directly and indirectly. So what does ADQ do and what's its mandate? As a holding company, we're working with our portfolio companies closely to enhance growth and bring efficiency across these entities. As a development company, we're working to advance economic clusters around four different sectors. And those are energy and utilities, food and agriculture, healthcare and pharma, as well as mobility and logistics. Now, it goes without saying, in terms of hydrogen, the scale and the resources that each of the Alliance members bring creates a unique opportunity to establish Abu Dhabi as a trusted leader in blue and green hydrogen. On top of that, the diversity of our portfolio as ADQ provides opportunities across the entire value chain of hydrogen, actually. I will go into more detail about this, but in summary, in our energy and utilities cluster, we have companies spanning from the entire spectrum, including renewables and nuclear energy. Among our industrial holdings, our companies are active in chemicals, metals, and manufacturing. In mobility and logistics, we have companies in the aviation, rail, shipping, and logistics. So frankly, this is an ex exciting space for us, and we really look forward to be part of this alliance. Thank you so much. Uh, very, very much appreciated. And I appreciate the, for our viewers a little bit of the explanation of uh, what is ADQ. Very important, uh, a very important new entity that's been created in Abu Dhabi going forward. Um, gentlemen, um, transition to the Q&A now, and I'll be asking some questions. And, and I, as I said, we'll watch the Q&A function carefully on the screen to see if we get some uh, questions from the audience. But Bader, um I, I have this first couple questions I want to ask you. But before we go to the those questions, why don't just for the audience sake, give us three or four sentences on what is making energy out of hydrogen? My staff put together a, a background note for me. There's gray hydrogen, there's brown hydrogen, there's blue hydrogen, there's green, green hydrogen. Can you just give the audience three or four or five sentences on what's the science of this? Well, Danny, let me, let, let me say that it's, it's, it's very much dependent on the source of where the hydrogen is coming from. And, uh, and in reality, you know, you could call it gray, you could call it blue, you could call it turquoise. You could call it green. You could call it whatever you want. The point is for the hydrogen alliance is that we're promoting something on the thought on the on the premise of clean energy. So what we care about, and this is where Hamad was referring to, you know, putting Abu Dhabi as sort of the champion for both blue and green. In reality, what we're aiming for is clean hydrogen, and clean hydrogen being from a clean source, whether it was solar, whether it was nuclear, whether it was. Uh, wind, as long as it comes from a clean source, I think that's the true potential of what hydrogen can become for transportation, for powering uh, facilities, manufacturing facilities, homes, uh, and, and, and so forth. So from our perspective, the whole concept of what hydrogen is, is it's a carrier. It's a carrier where you can take the sunshine and you can transform the sunshine into this hydrogen carrier and you know, transport it to anywhere around the world. We like to say like, in, the, in the context that we are exporting our sunlight to the rest of the world. And we have plenty of sunlight, as you know, Danny. So 
so we're gonna split the we're gonna split the water atom with the sun's the sun's energy, and the get the hydrogen gas is then gonna fuel our cars in the future and fuel our homes. Is that the idea? Well, you could take it from that perspective, but you know, one of the more interesting projects that we've been working on is focus on the end product, right? And for us, the end product that I'm getting very excited about because of my background, as you know, Danny, on the aerospace side, is synthetic aviation fuel. When you, when you take it into consideration that many European countries, and you, you mentioned it, right? This is a, there's a, there's not a climate change problem. There is a climate crisis problem that many countries around the world are facing at the moment. And unless someone does something about it, so in the context of European countries or the US or different parts of East Asia, they're imposing CO2 emission reduction targets. It's no longer a choice. You have to do it. And it's not being done by legislation. It's because the public, society, everybody wants to see this. They can't accept the fact that we're facing a climate crisis. Now, taking that into consideration, we can do it for cars. We can figure out a solution for cars. We can find solutions for homes. But how are you going to solve the problem with planes? How are you going to reduce CO2 emissions from planes? You, you know, electric planes, let's talk about commercial planes, passenger planes. Electric planes, at least 20 to 30 years away. So synthetic aviation fuel, taking what you just said, the green hydrogen or the green molecule, adding crude to it, as, as Khalid was talking about from the carbon capture storage technologies that we do have, and taking it through a refinery process, we would end up with synthetic aviation fuel. And that is amazing, in my opinion. Thank you, Bader. And thank you for correcting my atom to the word molecule, because I had to go back to my high school science class to read. You remember that we're talking about splitting the molecule, not the atom. Uh, that's what uh, Muhammad Al Hamadi does over at Enoch uh, is split the <laughs> atom. Uh, in any event, why? Before we leave you, Bader, for a second, why don't you just say a few more words about Mubadala's view of the the global energy transformation and and Mubadala's role in the hydrogen hydrogen economy going forward? And then we'll go to Khalid with some questions about the alliance. Sure. I mean, I mean. It, it's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not unknown, but the fact is that by 2050, we are going to see the global energy demand double, if not more than double, right? And that, that has required us to consider all sorts and all different forms of energy mixes. Clean energy more important, obviously, than, than, than the non-clean parts of it. And then when you look at our portfolio as Mubadla, I mean, we've been doing this for the past, you know, since inception. We have, we have um, Mubadla Petroleum operating in 10 countries. Very recently, uh, or more recently, we started pivoting away from hydrocarbon, I mean, uh, sorry, oil, oil uh, and, and dirty carbons into more natural gas. And about 70% of our assets are in gas at the moment. We, we had, a, a, obviously, our flagship project with Dolphin Energy uh, back in um, 2007 started operations by exporting uh, gas from Qatar into the UAE and taking it all the way to Amman. And more importantly, you know, one of our favorite and, and sort of, sort of uh, let me say, most respected projects is Mazdar. 15 years ago, Dan, you remember this, 15 years ago, people thought we were crazy. Why would we invest in solar when we were rich in hydrocarbons? Logically, it doesn't make sense. Are we cannibalizing ourselves? But look at us 15 years later. It was one of the smartest most, uh, I think, uh, forward-thinking strategies that Mubadla had developed. And today, Masdar is operating in 30 different countries, 30 different countries having a headquarter in Abu Dhabi. So when I look at sort of the macro trends, because going back to your question about why is it that Mubadla is so interested in hydrogen, look at the macro trends. Target is a CO2 emission reduction targets. Fact, technologies evolving on capturing the carbon at the source and using it as Khalid rightfully mentioned as, as an opportunity, but not as, a, as you know, something that is a liability. And then more importantly, uh, Danny, is you see this unprecedented first time changes in customer behavior. Customers are insisting on green products and green solutions. And they're insisting on those green products and green solutions being still more cost effective but also they want to see that the, 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 the manufacturer of those green products or the service provider of those green solutions is socially responsible. 
That is what excites us about hydrogen because we think and we believe that hydrogen is going to be that carrier to be able to provide the, or to provide and address the growing energy demands by 2050, but still be so clean that it is able, it enables us to produce the green products and the green solutions. Outstanding. Khalid, tell us a little bit about why, how and why did the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance come into existence? And what are its goals and objectives, please? Well, I think, I think this built on the UAE's position at, at the heart of the solution for the climate uh, challenge. So I think uh, the UAE was the first Gulf country to, uh, to sign the Paris Accord and also the first country to have clean energy targets. And as my, my colleague Bedr mentioned, uh, the UAE also have 15 years of the proven track record. So it's not just talk, but it's about real execution of uh, projects, renewable projects at scale. So I think the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance is, is more of a natural buildup on, on what we already have. And I think it's very important with regards to accelerating the development of, of hydrogen uh, within Abu Dhabi space and even beyond. I think it's very important to help us leverage our complementary strengths as, as partners in the space and to build a unified front. And I think that's really important as it helps us improve the alignment it helps us increase our influence with regards to solving some of the key challenges with hydrogen, uh, specifically with regards to, for example, the uh, regulations, as we now have the Ministry of, of Energy on board uh, with the Alliance. So I think, I think the uh, formation of Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance is key to accelerate our efforts and to streamline our efforts as we have a shared vision here and we are working together for the same objective. Thank you so much, Khalid. Uh, um, panelists, uh, as of, before I go to Hamid, I just want to alert you that uh, this is generating more questions in the Q&A and the chat function than I've seen in a lot of our <laughs> webinars. So um, you might want to just look over them and see if there's some urgent ones that you want to address. But Hamid, the Alliance aims to develop a roadmap to accelerate the UAE's adoption and use of hydrogen in many of ADQ sectors, such as energy and utilities, mobility and logistics and industries. We saw the announcement uh, that, that was made about Taka just two days ago. Tell us what kinds of international partners does the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance need to achieve this? And specifically, are there US-based companies that can partner with the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance to help achieve your goals? Absolutely, Danny. I think reality is the Alliance is already actively assessing several international partnerships. We're looking for best fit in terms of technology, R&D, execution capability, as well as end product offtake. So we need partners with the right technological and execution capabilities, frankly, which we can leverage to create a hydrogen ecosystem in Abu Dhabi. So in fact, a number of global players have been contacting us and we'll be pursuing partnership with some of these once the Alliance has developed a clear roadmap for hydrogen in Abu Dhabi, but we still welcome and any contact from any companies that feel they can contribute to our goals. Thank you. There, there's a number of questions in the chat function, Bader, before I go to the next one about the Alliance, just about, um, in general, opportunities to partner on research and development and opportunities for universities and higher learning to get more involved in this initiative. Maybe between the three of you, you could address that, uh, that sort of a cluster of questions and comments in the chat function. Sure. I, I don't have a keyboard, Danny, but I could say it verbally if you feel if you, if you, Please. No, that's what I'm asking. Please go okay. ahead, please, verbally. So, 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 so as Hamad mentioned, Danny, I mean, we look, at it, we look at it from a perspective of the value chain, right? So there is the energy feed, there is the process of the electrolyzer, there is the end products, there is the offtake, there is the services. And, and maybe I want to share a story. And, and this is an important story, Danny, because you, you, you spent a lot of time introducing us to... American companies that are interested to establish some form of presence in the region. And you, you opened up the question about partnerships. And, and let me say this. Every time we've had an opportunity to partner with a US-based company and to set up something here, fortunately or unfortunately, they've always had a presence and that decision was always taken 20 years ago. So I'm 20 years late in that conversation. And as much as the UAE offers a fantastic venue and a fantastic environment, both for living and for working, 
It is very difficult to have those kind of conversations. But when we talk about hydrogen, because it's nascent, because it's about to go through this sort of astronomical you know, growth at the moment that's coming out of all the different services, all the different opportunities, as Hamad mentioned, all the different companies that we're talking to, this serves as a unique opportunity, a unique opportunity to have those discussions because we will do it. As we've done with Masdar, we've created the Renewable Energy Champion 15 years ago. We will do it with the hydrogen and we will build a hydrogen economy here. So the opportunity to partner, the opportunity to have these discussions, use the UAE as a base in between the East and West, use the strong energy heritage that we have with ADNOP, the, the, you know, the companies that Hamad mentioned that belong to the state with respect to providing all the energy sources, the mixed energy sources, green, nuclear, you name it, and the investment capability of Mubadala, because we don't think about the UAE as you know, the only place where we want to set up projects, right? We always say we invest for Abu Dhabi, in Abu Dhabi and elsewhere around the world. So having that opportunity to partner with the companies earlier on and working with us and establishing that hydrogen economy, I think is a unique opportunity. So, so and, and universities, uh, R&D centers, whether they're in universities or whether they're in uh, uh, companies, you know, in the US, a lot of what we do is public private partnerships and some of these sorts of things. Yeah. How do the, all of these organizations, whether it's commercial or, or academic or research and development, how do, they, how do they become more involved with the Hydrogen Alliance going forward? I mean, f first of all, our contacts, we are, we're always readily available through yourself, Danny, but in general, I mean, think about it. We've just signed through, you know, you mentioned GMIS or Global Manufacturing Summit with the University of Pittsburgh, right? And that collaboration is coming through as well to look at clean energy sources. So there are many different touch points whether through ADNOC or you're talking to ADQ or you're talking to Mubadala. On the upfront research side, I think there are huge opportunities, especially on the conversion of getting you know, better electrolyzers or even converting the hydrogen into other different forms of carriers. As I mentioned, synthetic aviation fuel. I mean, it goes without saying that you cannot put anything on an aircraft that hasn't been certified. So just imagine how much work and effort is going to go into that process to be able to certify a synthetic aviation fuel. Uh, for the airlines. But other than that, the companies, I mean, there's so much technology that's going into this space at the moment, and we have such big aspirations of developing the hydrogen economy. I think we would welcome like-minded global players to come and establish a presence and work with us to actually create this market. So I heard you loud and clear, Bader. Um I heard you say loud and clear, this this hydrogen is just starting to take off as being is very nascent around the world. And Abu Dhabi is going to be a leader in this. It is a leader already. It's going to be a world leader in this. And now is the time to come to the UAE and engage with you and your colleagues on the webinar about just say, getting started now in this, in this, in this area. Go ahead, Bart. Just wanted to correct. It's clean hydrogen. Hydrogen clean has hydrogen. always been, yeah. Hydrogen has always been abundant. It's Thank clean you. hydrogen that we're focusing on. I only play a scientist on webinars, uh, not in real life. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hamid, uh, Bloomberg recently described ADQ as one of the Gulf region's most dynamic investors and Abu Dhabi's go-to fund to accelerate economic diversification. Um, it's clear that ADQ has strength across hydrogen's value chain. How should we think of your near-term and long-term role in the alliance? Well, Danny, uh, reality is when I look at the companies in our portfolio, all of them have a common theme, which is hydrogen as a point of growth. So whether we're talking about utilities or we're talking about industry or logistics, we're all talking about hydrogen as a potential frontier moving forward. Now, a few data points that I would like to highlight today is, you know, to support the production of green hydrogen, ADQ has a very unique position. Through Taqa, which ADQ owns a significant stake, there's already more than 2.5 gigawatt of solar capacity and more solar power generation is up, up and coming as well. Through Emirates Water and Electricity Company, which is the single off-taker of power and water in Abu Dhabi, the company is actually committed to increase its contribution of clean energy into the total mix in Abu Dhabi and the UAE. And of course, Enoch is our nuclear company that will play a fundamental role in leading the way 
as the largest resource or source of clean baseload electricity in the country and significantly accelerating the decarbonization of power in the UAE. Uh, key, some, of key, uh, some of the key data points as well is that ENIC would contribute more than 25% of the country's electricity, which creates a unique point as a clean carbon for the nation as well. Separately, when we're talking about renewables, as what Bader has highlighted earlier, the, our access to sun, our competitive procurement program allows us to achieve very competitive rates when it comes to tariffs. The recent bid that went out, we've achieved 1.35 cents per kilowatt hour for solar panels, which is something that is world class and, and, and just broken the world record basically. So with these kind of data points, we really and strongly believe through ADQ and through the partnership here, we can really drive the hydrogen program forward. Uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Halid. Uh, the, the question, there, there's been a number of questions on the chat about uh, the connection between uh, the Hydrogen Alliance and nuclear energy production. I think you answered it. Do you, do you want to refine the point or make it even more specific? What's Enix's role uh, in all of this going forward? Sure, Enix will have an integral role, be it the, uh, it's a base load provider of power that is co considered clean energy. So today, if we just rely on solar, obviously that's a daytime worth access to power. But if we look at Enix, it's a base load, it happens 24 seven, and the good news, it's gonna operate for 60 years. So therefore, it's a, it's a long program where we wanna make sure that we leverage on it. And this gives us access to a, a hydrogen that could be accessible and, and uh, a hydrogen, it's, some call it turquoise, some call it pink, uh, but it's a hydrogen effectively product that could be sold and exported internationally. Thank you, Hamid, I, I very much appreciate that. Hamid, uh, we've been talking about the different colors of hydrogen and uh, you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna take me a little while to get this all uh, right in my, in my brain going forward, but say a few more words about what types or colors of hydrogen is, is the Alliance specifically focused on in Abu Dhabi from your standpoint? And what is the target customer for each type of hydrogen? Uh, maybe helping our audience understand where will green hydrogen be focused? Where will blue hydrogen be focused? Uh, that, that might be useful. Yeah, thank you, Danny, for, for the question. I think, personally, uh, I'm not a big fan of, let's say, labeling uh, hydrogen in different colors. And the way I see it is hydrogen as a potential solution to decarbonize. So I see the value of hydrogen in the carbon content that is associated with the production of that hydrogen. So and I think that is uh, the what, what really values hydrogen. But uh, back to your question, I think that each uh, member of the Hydrogen Alliance have a certain affinity to a certain color uh, in that space, which is, I think, really clear. Um, I do see uh, the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance, at least locally uh, within the UAE, to have more green shades. Uh, but I think that we are not really limited to a certain uh, color or certain type of hydrogen. I think. Uh, under the uh, umbrella of the Alliance, we can consider all types uh, that come our way. And I think what's, what's also interesting, uh, given the, the different composition here, is that we can, we can deploy blue hydrogen solutions or blue ammonia solutions, and we can later on transition in the longer term into different colors depending on the use. So we do have uh, the capabilities of, of real long-term solutions uh, in, in that space. And with regard to the customers, I think, I think it's, it's very important that the customer uh, also appreciate the cleanness of the solution and be willing to pay the right price to make the, uh, these investments sustainable and make in commercial sense uh, for sure. But I think something for sure is today there is no clean uh, market uh, that exists. There is no clean hydrogen supply and there is no clean hydrogen demand. And I think this is something that the Alliance, uh, together with the stakeholders, uh, and potential partners, we need to collaborate and we need to create this, this uh, demand and we need to create this supply and also match them together in order to provide the complete loop uh, of a comprehensive hydrogen uh, economy. Thank you. Uh, Bader, our mutual dear friend, Simon Curtis in Pittsburgh 
asks the question, is hydrogen considered the leading source of clean energy in your view? Uh, and, 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 and any other, we know solar's under consideration and all that. I don't wanna take us off topic of hydrogen, but just a thought or two to answer Simmons' question. I think I'll answer it in a different way. I'll say it is the it has the highest potential to become the clean energy sor source uh, going forward. So that's that's the exciting part about it. And and like any other investor, Danny, any other investor, you always want to make sure that you're going to be putting your money into the opportunity at the right time. And when you see that sort of growth path, I mean, I have some of some of the facts that the team shared with me here. You know, green hydrogen could reach. Um, 530 million tons by 2050, displacing 10 and a half billion barrels of oil. Can you imagine that? 10 and a half billion barrels of oil displaced as a result of uh, hydrogen. Um, and it can contribute to about $300 billion every year by 2050. That contributes to 400,000 jobs. I mean, just imagine if we crack the code on green hydrogen in the UAE, we could potentially create hundreds and thousands of jobs in a new sector, in a new segment, in partnership with Adnoc and ADQ, right? And again, going back to the question, yeah, there is renewables. I, I mentioned the energy mix. Everything's important. We want to get to that point where global energy demand is going to be double. It's going to double. We need all the different types of energy, but the highest potential by far, from an investment perspective at least, is clean hydrogen. Understand. Hamid, um, as ADQ has Abu Dhabi's largest portfolio of energy and utility companies, you're probably uh, in the best position to answer this question. Why is the UAE well positioned to take the lead in developing in this field? And, and how will ADQ help the UAE become the center that, that, that Bader has predicted and described for building a hydrogen driven economy in the future? Absolutely. I think the answer to that question is, is twofold. Number one, as, as better has highlighted earlier, we have access and privilege to sun that, you know, results in a very competitive tariffs and competitive energy pricing. Now we know that for green hydrogen, 50% is attributed to power in order to produce the electrolysis to generate green hydrogen. So therefore, it's very important for us to have a competitive energy rates uh, that is you know, more competitive than countries or, or continents even, whether it's Europe or Asia or, or even the US. So therefore, what we definitely see is globally, there is a, this constraint of access to renewable power at competitive pricing. And this is where UAE can play a, a unique role in contributing into that and providing then hydrogen, green hydrogen at competitive rates. The second component is when it comes to geography. We're strategically positioned such that we can export both to the east and west, and, and transport is also a significant cost value when it comes to hydrogen. And so therefore, we can also be competitive on that front. Thank you, Hamid. Uh, Hamid, we've had a lot, little bit of discussion about green versus blue, and, um, and I understand that the Alliance is primarily going to be per pursuing green domestically. Uh, ADNOC will continue to develop, develop blue hydrogen independently within the UAE, leveraging an existing ca uh, uh, ca capacity and capabilities. Is, are you going to export blue hydrogen in the future? Well, to, to answer this question, I think, I think one thing for sure is we need to build the sustainable supply chains that links the demand centers uh, with the supply centers. So if we look at the supply side, I think from ADNOC, we have no issues uh, providing and supplying blue hydrogen, blue ammonia, regardless of the volume. So I don't see the volume being, being an issue for us. Uh, already within the waste, which is our petrochemical hub, uh, we, we have a plant, uh, ammonia plant, which, which has completed feasibility study. It's a clean ammonia, uh, low carbon at least, because the source of the hydrogen is coming from our petrochemical uh, plant. That is about 10 to 20 percent lower than the typical let's say carbon content in, in ammonia, uh, which, which should be operational by 2025. So, and we're also looking at potentially quick wins. So we're checking our systems to see, okay, how, how fast can we uh, ramp up our production? And we can you know, think about where to use this uh, from a demand perspective. Uh, but also from the demand, I think that segregates into local demand and international demand. For local, 
I think we need to work closely with, with our partners to create this and aggregate the demand. And I think it would be a great idea if we can do so nearby the supply center just to make it more, more attractive. Uh, I think that demand could be within Adnox systems or could be within Abu Dhabi or the broader UAE. But as a more of a priority and more of a time schedule, uh, we do see a lot of interest from Japan, uh, mainly with regards to their intention to replace the, the coal firing, which is really from an emission point of view, that's the worst case scenario, and to replace it with, uh, with ammonia firing. And now while this is not well uh, uh, fully commercialized, but we do see real intentions there, and we, we look forward to help our Japanese friends meet their uh, carbon uh, targets by 2030 and beyond. So this is something that we are very keen and working on uh, right now. Thank you, Khalid. Uh, before I go back to Hamid for a question, Khalid, we're getting a lot of questions in the chat function about the impact of all of this on LNG, uh, the ADNOX future. Uh, planning with regard to, to LNG and other exports, uh, and also uh, I think it's related the, the 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 carbon pricing question as well. You want to touch on any of those at all? Yeah, sure. Um, I think uh, that there is a lot of uncertainty in how things will evolve and how things will develop from from many many areas, including whether there will be a carbon tax or not. Uh, the customer appetite for, for different uh, types of hydrogen, uh, the, the blue hydrogen, for example, is, uh, could be socially acceptable in certain areas where it's less acceptable in other areas. Um, I think it also depends on how the technology evolves, how the cost curve uh, escalates, and how fast hydrogen really develops and uh, penetrates into different sectors. Uh, but I think I think uh, the, the truth is that hydrogen story resembles the beginnings of the LNG journey uh, 40, 50 years ago. So I think to build uh, investments in hydrogen, we need this sort of comfort with a long-term type of commitment that will really help us put, put the funds on the ground and really establish uh, that uh, commitment. Uh, I do not see them necessarily competing with each other. I think, as I mentioned, the, the natural gas uh, availability is not an issue for us, so I think we can continue to provide different solutions from either LNG or, or hydrogen or either uh, of the hydrogen, let's say, uh, derivatives like, uh, like ammonia. So I think that that should be complementing each other, uh, and I don't really see this being a, a real issue. That, that's, that's wonderful. Thanks. Hamid, um, what advancements will ADQ need to make to update companies and their infrastructure to facilitate the use of hydrogen as an energy source as efficiently as possible? And we have a, a question in the chat function that goes along with that. What is the most critical part of hydrogen produ production value chain that needs the most urgent development in your mind? Sure, maybe I could begin with the second question and the reason be it because in the short term, uh, as my colleague Khaled has highlighted, the opportunity lies in, in blue hydrogen. So the kind of the value there is focusing on the infrastructure and the capability to produce uh, blue hydrogen through the carbon capture and various capabilities that is to be set. Uh, and then obviously in the longer term, once we're building and gearing towards the green hydrogen, there needs to be a transition as well. Now, where ADQ can play in that is effectively, we need to look into our clusters, whether it's utilities, mobility, uh, and industry as well. When it comes to utilities, we want to continue focusing and transitioning into the cleaner energy that is shaping the future of the hydrogen cluster. So therefore, we want to focus on building more renewables, building more uh, energy, uh, let's say, uh, efficient plants as well to ensure that it's compatible with the green hydrogen story. When it comes to industrials and mobility, we're well placed to drive the local hydrogen adoption in key sectors with high energy demand. So for example, what we can do is substituting gray hydrogen consumption with blue and green in steel production and other industrial areas. Thinking of ways of how hydrogen from renewable energy or nuclear can inject, can be injected into existing electricity generation and grids, for example. So one thing we are currently contemplating as well is assessing hydrogen fuel cell and hydrogen fuel cell applications across different platforms, right? So we can, for example, combine hydrogen with a fuel cell, which is a great vector for clean energy. 
since it makes it possible to produce electricity directly on board of electric vehicles, or even to provide electricity that can give access to remote areas that is cut off from the power grid. You, you mentioned gray. Um, anything about waste? There's a couple questions in the chat function about waste uh, uh, with regard to hydrogen. Right. So in terms of gray, we obviously today, we, through Emirates Steel, we do have a carbon capture. And that is with the collaboration of ADNOC, of course, where uh, we do uh, provide that carbon back to ADNOC for ADNOC utilization. So obviously, for us, we want to continue focusing and building more of a clean uh, uh, hydrogen story, which is focused more on blue and green in the long term. I got it. Thank you. Bader, uh, next time we have to have our, our dear friend, my dear friend, the CEO of Mazdar on a webinar like this. But it, for, for the moment, since uh, Mazdar and Mubadala uh, are, are joined, in addition to Mazdar, what other Mubadala entities will contribute um, to the Alliance? Uh, will, you, will you leverage your extent, extensive international holdings to promote the use of hydrogen abroad? Of course, I mean, let me start locally first. Um, Strata is looking into opportunities of producing or manufacturing the electrolyzers. We have dolphin gas as a source of natural gas, which could contribute to the blue hydrogen. We have Masdar and to be very specific, Masdar is actually working on a project, a demonstrator project to produce synthetic aviation fuel um, for, uh, well, to start off with the transportation of vehicles, go into maritime, eventually end up with synthetic aviation fuel for 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 the airlines, uh, and globally, uh, we have a we have a you know we have a big sort of portfolio on the Cepsas and the Novas and and everything else that's outside uh, of the UAE in places like Canada and the US and in Europe. So we are going to leverage the whole portfolio to be able to maximize the return to our economy in Abu Dhabi, and that's that's pretty much the direction that we're going uh, towards. And, and say a word or two about the possibility of exports to your other elements abroad in the future. In terms of our industry, of course. I mean, we are, uh, Danny, I, I've, I've been in touch with a few, you know, sort of technology companies. And let me mention one of them, like Google, right? Um, when you think about Google having the, let's say, the greenest, or if not the only green data center, just imagine how those data centers are popping up around the world and we have an, you know, an appetite to create these data centers and create these clouds for the, future of, uh, for the future of technology and for the future of AI and the digital economy. So just imagine once we get the green molecule and we're able to transport, you know, convert it into a carrier, transport it somewhere else and reconvert it back into hydrogen gas, that is, that is gonna be big. The only thing that we need to manage on the green hydrogen side is the cost. I mean, you heard it from Hamad and you heard it as well from Khalid. That is the big challenge in front of us at the moment. So an alliance between the three of you, the three of the largest companies in the UAE, uh, I describe each one of you as a powerhouse, uh, has really created a splash. Uh, an alliance of this caliber, uh, I don't know if we've seen it before, uh, quite frankly. Um, what do you hope to achieve through the alliance beyond hydrogen? Is there, I mean, the name of the alliance is hydrogen, but do you see the possibility as this setting a model for other uh, entities to join force and work together in, in the future in the UAE like this, as an example? And I'll ask each of you your, your thoughts on that. Starting with Khalid, uh, is this a model for the future for something else, Khalid, from, in your view? Well, in, in my view, I think that this, this could be uh, the nucleus, uh, right, where a center of gravity that brings everybody together and we look forward to, uh, to further expand. Uh, but I think for now we're, uh, yeah, we're focused on hydrogen and that will be a long journey by itself. So, <laughs> but I think that could set a real good example of how uh, we can work together as, as one front, as I mentioned. Uh, within the Abu Dhabi entity. I mean, looking at the landscape of Abu Dhabi in terms of governance, we are very closely linked together. And I think this helps structure the, the, the discussions and help us uh, align better uh, in order to uh, achieve our targets, not only on hydrogen, but also beyond that. Okay. Hamid, do you want to comment on that question? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I really believe that we're all part of a one Abu Dhabi team here through the same shared vision of our common kind of shareholder to deliver clean diversified energy source. I think we, uh, you know, as in Abu Dhabi, we have the right to win 
uh, when working together. And to answer your question as well, I think we're already working in alliances and other fronts as well. So for example, we have a partnership with Adnoc called Taziz today. We work in multiple fronts with Mubadala, sometimes publicly, sometimes not, but obviously with the goal to always collaborate and complement one another. So indeed, this is a good you know, avenue for us as a hydrogen alliance, but we will continue seeing ourselves as a one Abu Dhabi team. Great. Badr, you get to answer that question too. <laughs> but I, I don't know what to add more than what Hamad and Khalid said, right? This is a team Abu Dhabi initiative. And, and Danny, you know this uh, from, from your engagements with me, even on the aerospace side, we worked very closely in Mubadla and Ittihad, or on the defense side, Mubadla, Edge, and even Tawazan. You know, even though we haven't called it alliances in the past, but what is so unique about Abu Dhabi is that we all work together as one team to achieve one outcome and one objective. And when we have that objective, you know, sort of in the case of clean hydrogen, so clearly drawn out by the leadership in terms of a vision, I, I, I'm guessing everyone captured the point that Khalid made very early on about His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, our crown prince, when he put out that message about hydrogen. He put out that message. You got ADQ, Adnoc, Mubadla grouping up together saying, we're going to tackle this together. And we're going to achieve that vision and we're going to achieve that objective as we have done in the past and many other occasions. Thank you. So Hamid, I'm going to ask you the last question, uh, but I'm, I'm also going to throw it open to the other uh, gentleman to, to comment. I'm going to ask the question sort of this way. I love to ask the, uh, my guests, uh, what keeps them up at night and what do they worry about at 3 a.m. when they wake up <laughs> in the middle of the night? Uh, so I'm going to say, what do you think will be the key to success for the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance uh, going forward in the future? And when you wake up at 3 a.m., what do you, what's sort of the, the, the driving thing in your mind that you want to make sure you get right for the, to make it successful? Sure. Uh, reality is many countries around the world currently are racing towards hydrogen. So one thing we want to make sure is we're doing it right and we have the right roadmap for it. And in order for us to do that, we really have to work hand in hand together with the private sector as well to ensure we get best in class technologies and best IP and best experiences as well. That is one. The second component is we wanna make sure from a public policy, there's an incentive programs to be activated at the national level to create that drive towards hydrogen adoption earlier on. Thank you. Hala, do you wanna comment on that? Yeah, I think from, from my side that one of the key issues that we have is, is the sense of urgency that we have may not match what others may have, right? And so that, that could create a D-link in the expectations from a schedule perspective, which, which I think we, 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 we are impatient, if I, if I may say, with, with regards to development of hydrogen. We'd like to uh, learn how we work while we're running. So I think that, that is the expectation. And that is something which keeps me up, up at night is how we can do this faster and how we can move with more speed. And given the, the challenges that, that are there and also the, the how, how it's, it's a big hype and everybody's coming on board, uh, we are still building up the organization. To, so getting the right resources, right, with the right caliber and the right experience is not something that's, that's easy also to achieve. So that is also something to consider because everybody is rushing into, into the hydrogen business uh, these days. Thank you, Holly. Bader, I know nothing keeps you up at night because we're on what's up 24 hours a day and neither <laughs> one of us are ever sleeping, but, but you get the last word here as far as saying, uh, what do you, what's key to success uh, for this project going forward? I, I, I say it's for this project and every other project, Danny. Talent, 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 talent. The more talented people we get from the US, from elsewhere around the world, from the local population, that is the key to success. I've seen it, you know, projects where it went completely wrong because we didn't resource it with the right talent. And I've seen it when it went really well, when we resource it with the right talent. And that to us, you know, as Khalid said, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to walk and run at the same time. So learning is a process, but at the same time, we have expectations to actually deliver on the ground, hopefully, Khalid and Hamad, before year end, right? <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is how, how excited we are about this. And I'm, we, are, we are, you know, super excited to make sure that we, we put the flag before year end. And that demonstrates the Alliance is actually working and we've actually delivered the, our first project or starting, to, uh, starting the process of delivering the first project. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. By year end, uh, that's the that's the initial uh, goal and objective. Uh, and as what very well stated by Botter, uh, now is the time to get involved on on the ground level uh, in thinking about the future and by partnering with Abu Dhabi in this very very important area and initiative. And a number a number of folks from businesses from universities have asked us gentlemen, how to get in touch with you and your organizations. So I will just uh, take the lead here for the Business Council and ask everyone to make sure that we have your contact details and your questions and or your interest in being involved in what way. And we will forward that all to the gentlemen on the uh, webinar today and make sure they have it and their teams have it to follow up with you. So thanks everyone for engaging in this wonderful discussion. Uh, really, really thought provoking. I learned a lot. I know our viewers learned a lot. Um, with that, I'd like to invite you to make sure you attend some of our webinars coming up. Uh, we're going to have His Excellency Yusuf Ahmed Al Ali, the Assistant Undersecretary for Electricity, Water and Future Energy uh, from the UAE Ministry of Energy and Infrastructure uh, in, on April 6th. Again, uh, along the theme of our climate uh, task force uh, and in preparation for President Biden's historic task, uh, climate change summit, which will occur in Washington DC at the end of April. Thank you everyone. Have a great evening uh, in the UAE, a great day in the US and my dear friends on the webinar today. Thanks so much for taking the time today. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.